Well, Carl, is that a cookbook or a doorstop? It may be a slightly large book, Steve, but I like to feel the pages of a real book. Yes, and the gravy stains as well. <laughs> Very funny, but it's all about the tactile experience, you see. What's wrong? It's my iPad. I've run out of power, and I forgot to bring my charger with me. Oh! <laughs> well, never mind, my friend, because I think that we can find the recipe you're looking for inside my doorstop. It doesn't require a power cord, you oh, see. Oh, my, my, my. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of One Chef, One Critic. I'm Carl Wells, food critic for The Telegram. And I'm Chef Steve Watson of Central Dairies. Steve, I have to say, um, I hate to admit this, <laughs> but you know, there is a use for iPads and Wi-Fi in the kitchen these days, unquestionably. Absolutely, Carl. Just like salt and pepper, it's certainly a staple in anybody's kitchen today, whether it's from the pad or whether it's from just from your phone. Mm -hmm. um, you could even get a true tried recipe or be innovative and just search something else. You could convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit just on a, uh, just on a whim. So. Yes, exactly. And the other thing I like, you know, you can go to the refrigerator and, you know, if you only have a few ingredients there, and you can't figure out what to do with them. You can actually type it in now. Exactly. In, in certain mm. uh, sites, type in the ingredients and it will give you a recipe. Works well. For, specifically yeah. for those yeah. ingredients, which is great. The other thing you can do is you can actually watch videos now and see somebody put a recipe together. And work alongside of it. And work alongside of it. And you can do that actually with this show, folks. <laughs> if, you, if you're a Rogers subscriber and you have any place TV, you can literally watch one chef, one critic on your iPad and make the recipe with us as we're making it in, uh, in live. Uh, so uh, yeah, a lot of uses for, mm -hmm. uh, for them, but I still enjoy cookbooks. Uh, and may I recommend <laughs> this cookbook to you? Yeah, yeah. It's a great book, by, by the way, and you should just uh, you know read, turn the pages, get that tactile feel, and enjoy the whole experience. Uh, coming up in the program today, our special guest is Andy Newman. Andy is the co-owner of Coast 101.1 FM Radio in Newfoundland, and we'll uh, have a nice chat with him. And what are we cooking with Andy today? We're going to be making a be beautiful Asian-style yellowfin tuna. Excellent. Baked. Yes, absolutely. And Chef Stephen Googlemeyer of the Delta Hotel will be here, and he's going to make one of his amazing apps speaking of apps <laughs> an app it's an appetizer okay so stick around for a complete listing of one chef one critic recipes wine lists and more check out our website let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600 well, it's our pleasure to welcome Andy Newman of Coast Radio to One Chef, One Critic. Andy. Thanks for having me. It's taken, it's taken us too long to have you on the show, my friend. That's okay. I think it's worth the wait. <laughs> I, well, yes, I think so. Uh, what is that exactly, Steve? Yeah, you've already seen it, Andy. That's some beautiful yellowfin tuna, mm. which I was fortunate to have kept from the grocery store. And we're going to be baking it Asian style. So I think right. we should uh, start get, get, getting ready for it. And when I say baking, we're going to put, be putting this particular one into aluminum foil so I'll get you to put a little bit of uh, baby bok choy on there uh, maybe two or three pieces just, just lay it on the bottom that's good perfect and what do you want me to do Steve actually what I've got for you there Carl I want you to I've got some sugar snap peas and some almonds I'm going to get you to saute them with a little bit of olive oil and just season them nicely because there's going to be lots of seasoning in here so uh, he says almonds yeah. I say almonds oh. <laughs> Okay. Potato, potato. Potato, potato. 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 We just put a f few of our red peppers on there as well, and away we go. Eddie, do you cook at home? Uh, I'm, I'm learning. I'm getting better at it. Um, my, uh, it's taken you all this time. It has, <laughs> yes. Um, well, I, I do other things. So okay. I, I, I iron and I can do laundry. Dray, so, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I have some, like, I have right some redeeming yeah. qualities. But, That's uh, perfect. There, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm growing my repertoire. Excellent. So this is I'm, great. So. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Because I know you like the food. Top. Yeah, go right ahead. Oh, I eat. Mm. Make no mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love food. Yeah. I do mm. love food. So uh, this is right good. in the center there. That's perfect. I Excellent. have. Uh, I'm fortunate to have some good friends who love good wine, and good food, and yes. can cook. Those so. friends always come in handy. Yes. 
Yes. And then I'm just going to give you some garlic and some ginger and Perfect. some uh, chiffonade of orange, and we'll just sprinkle that all over the top. Right. And a few chili peppers, depending on how okay. much you like, good, so good. to speak. So. So this is what they'd call, if you were using a culinary term, it would be en papillote. En papillote, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you, oh, I was going to say, if it's Asian, it's got to have soy sauce. sauce. And that's <laughs> what I'm going to do now. I've got a light <laughs> soy sauce there. I'm yeah. going to put some rice wine vinegar, and I'm also going to put a little bit of sesame oil in there. So I'm oh, going to make a little oh. bit of a dressing that now, we're actually okay. going to be putting. I love garlic. So. Oh, by all okay. means. All right. By all means. Me too. But I am cognizant of, of guests. So. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. No problem at all. all right. I know somebody from this France this who this actually this hates this garlic. Can you believe that? Wow. Somebody from France who doesn't like garlic. Oh my goodness. Um, Do they like red wine? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, oh yes. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes yeah. They like red it's not wine. Not completely wrong. Man. No. Okay. Uh, Andy, you aren't originally from Newfoundland, are you? I, uh, I grew up in a small town in, uh, in Nova Scotia, so I say I'm a bayman from Nova Scotia. Okay. Um, and Cape I, Breton? Or? Uh, no, right at the other tip, down in, uh, in Yarmouth. Oh, okay. Um, I lived for a couple of years in Port Hawkesbury, though, in Cape Breton, which was a great... Uh, uh, free school, yeah, uh, well, school yes, for coming say, to Newfoundland. We, so, yes. We'd probably give you a Newfoundland passport anyway if you were from Cape Breton. <laughs> uh, well, I've, I've been here longer than anywhere else, so <laughs> yeah. it's been. Uh, I'm in year yeah. 26. So, so yeah, okay, yes. that that qualifies you. You're you're uh, you're a Newfoundlander now. Did you start in radio up there? I did actually. Um, you remember Mary Tyler Moore? Yes. It all started in a small <laughs> 5,000 watt radio station. <laughs> So. I've got you beat. I've got you beat. For me, it all started in a little 1,000 watt yes. radio station. Yes. Yeah, VOWR, 1,000 watts when I started there. Yeah. So, what made you want to start? Um, it was all. It, I, ha, I had a cousin in radio when I was a little boy, and I was fascinated by uh, by the whole thing. He would take me to the radio station where he worked, mm -hmm. and he had a tape recorder that he used to practice. Uh, you know, he was just starting out, so he'd he'd read the news, and uh, he uh, let me use the tape recorder, and th that was it. I you was I was hooked. I was hooked. Oh. And yeah. the chef thing. And you've become a bit of a media, uh, you know, icon all, as all, well in this market as all well. All thanks so to Carl. All thanks to Carl. And that was what probably 26 years oh, ago. Yeah, I, think I was. was no, no, yeah, about 26 yeah, years ago. I was the first person to put him on television. Television, yeah. And I've regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> he says that all the time to me. He says that all the time. To me. <laughs> bring it on, bring it on. No, no, and no, no, no. And you're in year six or seven? Season seven? This is season, season eight. eight. Season eight. Season eight. Season eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought. 140 yeah, wow. shows almost. And, and all these sharp knives. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's, very cl it's very clever what he's trying to do. He's trying to take over my show. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, the interviewer is being interviewed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always have to have an exit strategy. Yeah, always yeah, have yeah, an exit yeah. strategy. So I'm not going to be shy with our dressing. Mm -hmm. That's uh, rice wine vinegar, some soya, okay. and a little bit of oil there as well. Now, so. how tight do you want this? Okay, one? now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you another piece of foil, and then you can foil, sorry, then you can fold the ends in around oh. it like so. And you can do it quite tight, then, and then make a square and an oblong out of that. Oh, so. I bet that's going to be absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. And while, that's, while you're doing that, I'm going to make another one, and I'm going to make it in the bag. Which is well, I did see the Philo, and I, uh, <laughs> that did have my attention. Right? <laughs> so I will do the same thing like that. So I was talking earlier, you're still doing a lot of MC, uh, are you? Uh, quite busy. Yeah. Uh, the, the charity organizations on the Northeast Avalon are plentiful. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There are a lot that are very good, yep, yep. and uh, the need is great. Yes, absolutely. So finding the time is more of a challenge I these can days. I well imagine. But, uh, but I pick and choose, and, I, and I've, I've been very fortunate to meet some amazing people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and have a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, I'm still busy. Because yeah, they've certainly changed over the past 20 years, haven't they? 20 well, years. We were, uh, we were talking the... Uh, the first couple of shows at the uh, at the convention center uh, really amped things up. You yep. had video screens, you had lighting. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know, yeah. magnificent buffets. Absolutely, and, yeah. Uh, and just you know, fabulous. Uh, and that really moved the bar. You know, the old rubber chicken dinner is. Passé. It's gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. 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 No, it's uh, e even a luncheon now is the expectation it's, is. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we have some amazing talent in the city as well. Oh, the performers, designing and, just, and yes. things like that at the yeah. the, the decorators and the uh, the themes. Yeah. 
on the ice. Yes, <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yes. I've this this gentleman that I know that makes an amazing ice sculpture <laughs> too. Yes, just a few, <laughs> just a few. So as you can see, I'm just doing the same thing, but I'm just doing it in the back. Okay. The puppy out. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what each of these looks Look like. Huh? Absolutely, when they're cooked. Yeah. So that uh, that bag is going to get uh, charred, I guess, but it won't right actually up. burn. No, it won't. won't. No. Yeah. No. Okay. So Andy, uh, I I'm a little bit reluctant to go down this road, but you did say before we went on the air, you should ask me about the time I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that. So <laughs> and. So years ago, mid '80s, was it A plus? The Atlantic Lottery. Uh, Brian Phillips yeah. used to be on and would do the live, yeah, uh, the yeah. live draw. All oh, right, on. So right on. Well, Brian got himself into a little bit of trouble. In uh, and around that time, Huey Lewis was out with the song "I Want a New Drug." Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, being the snotty little 17, 18 year old, I did make some some comments about sending out that song to. My friends at the radio station in Halifax, and <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, that yeah. was the end of that. That was so, the, that was the end of so Andy. Yes. Fortunately, <laughs> uh, both myself and Mr. Phillips found other employment, so good. it worked out good. okay. Good, okay, right. So that's what we got out. So what there? Okay. So and that goes in the oven. Absolutely, that will go into the oven. But uh, through the wonders of science and TV, we've already got. We, we, we've got a couple already made. So I'm going to move that to the side. I see you to my move to the side. And these actually, I did it all in the, ah. in the paper, in the parchment Ooh. paper, in the bag. Nice. So uh, away we go. I Perfect. cannot wait to taste, taste the those. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, so everything's uh, copacetic. I'm going to go to the wine cellar okay. and get a bottle of wine. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. So do these cook differently in the phyllo versus the, the foil? Exactly the same, Andy. Exactly the same. So let's have a look. We'll just cut the bag open now. And look at that oh, tuna yes. steak there. All co nicely cooked. So Please. do these cook differently, one on the foil and one on the... They're the same amount of time. Same okay. amount of just evenly. These were in the oven for uh, 15 minutes and then it's done. Because you don't want to overcook the product, right. that's underneath there as well. So, And all that steam, because basically what it's doing is steaming. 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 Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Carl. Jennifer Murray of The Art of Wine. It's Thank always you. nice to see you in our One Chef, One Critic wine cellar. And today we have tuna, but it's tuna cooked in these little pouches and uh, kind of Asian flavored tuna fish. So I guess uh, we could go with any number of wines for a dish like this, could we not? Absolutely, you have lots of options. The mm -hmm. beauty about tuna is that uh, it's, it's a meaty fish. It is certainly meaty, yes. Very meaty yeah. and lots of flavor, so it mm -hmm. adapts really well to a great variety of wine styles. Mm -hmm. You can go with a white, with a red, with a rosé, with a sparkling, so lots of choices. Mm -hmm. But today I have uh, three great choices for you. The first one, is a Kubi White. Mm -hmm. It's a blend of three different grape varieties, Sauvignon Blanc, Bura, Verdejo, and it has a lovely acidity and fruit, so it will be really a great choice. Is this uh, Spanish wine? It's a Spanish okay. wine from yeah. Castilla Leon, and mm -hmm. it's listed for $14.11. Great price. And the second choice I have is a new product to the liquor stores. It's a Pinot Noir or Pinot Nero in Italian from Alto Adige, right in the border with Austria. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Pinot, uh, nice acidity, lots of fruit. You can also serve it uh, a bit uh, chill, so mm. very fresh. So it's in a burgundy style bottle, so I'm assuming yes. it would be like a burgundy. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Similar uh, to. And mm. it's listed for $25. Good. And another new product we have, fantastic, different, is called La Grain from Clary Caltern, also from Alto Adige. This is a very different grape variety, beautiful, lots of fruit, low mm. tannins, so it will not interfere with your chili flakes or all the spices you have in mm -hmm. your dishes. Mm -hmm. Any of them would be fantastic. Okay, well, you know what? Um, I, I like this cuvee. But I think our guest today yes. may be a white wine drinker, so I'm going to pick white uh, just to be on the safe side. That would be fantastic, <laughs> okay. Carl. So lovely to see you. You always. too. Bye bye. Bye. Well, just put a few of Carl's sugar snap peas, sorted with some almonds, and as you can see, and his beautiful tuna there. And uh, we'll now go to the table and let's see what they think of it. And there we are, a Th nice this glass is, of white wine. This is horrible hospitality. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, Steve Cook, you're pouring me wine. Yeah. It's, this is lovely. And we've left it in the bag. In the bag, yeah. to give us the tactile experience yeah, of absolutely. Uh, <laughs> ripping it open. You I can't find these phyllo bags. Yeah. You know, we're gonna have to talk about this after. I have, to, I have to taste this because I'm so curious. Mm. I think it's got a little about, spice to it, a bite to it. Well, the Asian uh, flavors. Yeah, all coming through. Mmm. Yeah. Is it 10, 12 minutes? Yeah, 10, 12 minutes in the oven, that was it. And it steams in the bag, so to speak, so. Mm. Or in the foil, whichever. I put too much food in my mouth, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Andy, I was going to ask you, um, what do you feel about the state of radio and TV these days? It's, uh, well, it's certainly changed, it's evolved. Um, everyone said the internet was going to kill both of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, radio has been mm -hmm. threatened to be dead for so many years. Color mm -hmm. TV was going to kill radio. Yeah, yeah. Um, TV, radio, the internet are all just vehicles. They're transmission vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, content. Yep. Very important. What is it about your show, right? No matter whether it's watched after the fact, whether someone's PVR'd it, um, that makes people want to. You know, you, it's all about the content. Uh, I grew up being an announcer. Mm. My kind are dead now. Right. It's about being an entertainer. Yeah. You know, yeah. content. Yeah. Content is the word. So yes. I think the future is, yeah, as long as content you, yeah. stays yeah. there, future's good. And, uh, you know, there's always going to be an audience for con content, but also specific kinds of content. Like, well, one of the things that I like about this show is that it's very local. Yeah, absolutely. And you yeah. get to meet people like you, interesting people like you. Thank you. And, um, you know, uh, that means something to people, but as you say, you know, with PVR and everything else, you can watch it whenever you want to. And, and, and it's like the chefs cooking food today. Um, would some of the wild game recipes translate in Toronto or Vancouver? Yeah. Probably not. But some of the more Asian stuff, that more, uh, you know, exotic stuff, doesn't translate well here. Mm. So. so you're not on the air anymore at Coast. Do you miss it? That's the fun part, you know. That's, that's the fun part. Doing this is, yeah. is the fun part. Yeah. Um, I'm an office boy now, so yeah. it's, it's numbers and it's, uh, it's phone calls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, what, do you do for, what do you do for relaxation and, and fun these days? Still love in to your, ski. In your downtime. Um, st still have a few charities I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids are older now, so they're, they're teenagers. And we still we have twins. My yeah. gosh, oh, really? they're, teenagers. they're teenagers now. The so last time I saw them, they were in a pram. <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, so there is no spare time really. No, no, no. But no. Uh, but they're a lot of fun now, and we, and we share a lot of things, and we do a lot of things together. So I'm quite fortunate. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's really it. But I still ski, uh, get out on the snowmobile, and yeah. uh, and if I ever can. Do you find like the winter sports? Well, if I can ever find the time to have a boat, yeah, yeah. that's still the goal. <laughs> yeah. that's still the goal. Yeah. But there's just no and time. of course you've got the, the cooking is your new passion now. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah. So I've just got to learn to have the ingredients on site, site yeah. rather than that's spend right. the afternoon noon shopping. Yeah, that's right. Um, just one final question about the business. Um, what about Coast 101.1? Uh, do you have any plans with regard to the radio station changes? Uh, we, we do a lot of develop, research. Development. Uh, uh, we're expanding a little bit into the uh, into the Clarenville market. Um, that's our, our next big project. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's you know, it's ask people what they want, make sure that they're getting what they want, and uh, and we'll take it as it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, look, it's been wonderful having you on yeah. One Chef, One Critic. Absolutely. And and perfect. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Bon appétit. Coming up next, folks, we have Chef Steve Googlemeyer of the Delta, and he's going to show us how to make one of his fabulous appetizers. Well, the Delta Hotel continues to be one of the busiest components in the hospitality industry of Newfoundland and Labrador, creating hundreds and hundreds of meals on a regular basis for practically every major event that happens in this province. The guy who uh, runs that ship, <laughs> who looks after all the food, is with us now. He is Chef Stephen Googlemeyer of the Delta. Nice to have you on the show again. Thanks very much for having me back, Carl. So you've got a part of a pig here, I see. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we uh, we got a little pig's trotter here. It's uh, something I learned when I was when dancing through the kitchens in England where Gordon Ramsay used to work as well. Mm -hmm. um, so 
you know it's uh, it's a little bit of a lengthy preparation you know it'll take a few minutes to go walk through the whole thing but I do have a one that I've prepared back at the hotel there so this was deboned correct yeah so the whole thing gets deboned uh, you know I mean if you're uh, if you're in great shape it would you know if you're expertise at it you know it would take maybe uh, five minutes to bone it maybe even less than that mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I ever got to five but um, very good. You know, so it's deboned, and then what? What? what what's so we debone it, and then we braise the skin just on itself. itself so we yep. take the insides out right up to the front knuckle, okay. and uh, and then we would braise the skin. Once it's fully braised, we take it out, and you have to work really quickly, otherwise the skin starts to get um, hard again. Yeah. You fill it with a chicken mousse, and your mousse could have any. In this case, it's got some uh, sweet breads. Uh, it's got some morel mushrooms in there, and some buttered sautéed onions. Mm -hmm. Right. So then. You know, it's up to you whether you slice it and serve it just as is or whether you put it in the pan here, which we're doing now. So, okay. you know, we've got a, a nice piece there. So I'm just going to move this over to the side. side. Okay. Now we need a little bit of wipe. And we'll just go right into our plating since okay. most of it's done here. And what are we going to be serving with it? So we've got a, we've got a nice uh, Jigs Dinner croquette here, which okay. we've... Okay, so just explain what's in that. Absolutely. It's a jig, Jigs Dinner Croquette, so explain what's in it. So basically at the hotel we wanted to, um, you know, give the, the people who come to the province a, an idea of what Jigs Dinner Croquette or Jigs mm -hmm. Dinner is. So mm -hmm. instead of being able to put all the components mm -hmm. together, we put it all into one and we serve as a, in the croquette style as an appetizer or even as a canopy. And it's been a big winner for the past three years. So it's got root vegetables, Absolutely. Uh, your carrots, some salt beef, your cabbage, your salt beef. Some savory. Yeah, we've got breaded absolutely. And, and see the savory all yeah, in there. Okay. And, uh, you know, turnip and mashed potatoes just right. to kind of bind it together. So now we, we take our pig's trotter off. Of so we're going to put that right up top there. Okay. And I'm just going to fire this up real quick and we're going to just throw a knob of butter in there with some shallots. We're going to okay. just make a real quick sauce. Okay. It's going to take no time at all. So we got some shallots, we got some butter. Yep, we got some Granny Smith apples. Okay. You can use any apples you wish. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally I would flame up some uh, rum. Okay. In this case, you know, we got a nice toasted caramel whiskey. Okay. Again, nice sweet flavor. Whiskey goes great mm -hmm. with the... Uh, <laughs> and here was I thinking this was... <laughs> for you, caramel. I thought it was syrup. <laughs> now, I'm going to do it vice versa so I don't uh, have a flame there in your, in your too big of flame. So we're just okay. going to add our demi in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that brown and, sauce. Uh, yeah, that's a nice brown okay. sauce. Okay. And then we're just going to add a little touch of that away okay. from the fire to avoid any mm -hmm. avoid any accidents. Okay. And if it comes to flame, no worries. There we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we got some vegetables here today with us. Got some nice uh, garnish. So we got a dried apple chip. Oh, okay. nice. Mm -hmm. And then over here we have some fennel stalks, which have been cut down. Yeah. Yeah. And we got some. You know, some beautiful. I'm just going to take some. Like, Demi there. You got some fava beans oh, there as well. Some yeah. fava beans, right? And just pour it out all over top there. Okay, nice. And here we have some red pepper coolie. I'm going to turn that down now. Yep. So we're just adding all the components to the plate now for the garnish, right? So there you go. Look at that. It's making it look nice and sexy. Yeah. Mm. And then we got some grapes, which are also a nice uh, compliment to the pork. A nice add-on yeah. to the pork there. Yeah, so we're just yeah. going to drop some grapes. I like that. Down around, and some rapini is always good. We have some blanched rapini there, yeah. and we're just going to finish it up with the sauce. Then. Banquet fit for a king now. There you go. The lowly pig's trotter. <laughs> has been turned into yeah. a meal fit for a king. Yeah. And we got the apples in there. Mm. That looks beautiful. It really does. Perfect. Well, Steve, uh, look at that. Masterpiece. Uh, I'm just going to... Would you like to try some coal? Yeah. Yes, I, I will. I'm going to burn my mouth. Yeah, it's nice and hot. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Chef. And that's it for this edition of One Chef, One Critic. Perfect. Let me have a. That would be me. Yes, we'll. Uh... Carl, what's that you got in your hand? Is that a doorstop or. Is that a cookbook or a doorstop? Door yeah.